Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over Synopsis with PB Srinivas. We're going to talk today about distributed design implementation. So PB, what's changed here? Why are we dealing with uh, distributed design implementation versus what we used to do? Okay. So basically, as you can uh, see, the size of the chips that are being done today, either they are like a large chiplets or large the blocks of large SOC, the size of the you know chips are becoming very very big. This combined with uh, you know increasing complexity of timing closure with more corners and more design modes and voltages is hurting design productivity. And so most of the time today the design implementation is done hierarchically with uh, design planning used upfront to create multiple design blocks and they are separately implemented using synthesis and PNR tools and then put together at the end, and this is hurting design productivity. And this is the, the whole divide and conquer approach, right, that we've been using for so long? That is correct, that is correct. It's a divide and conquer approach, but the challenge has become the fact that when we come back together, the interaction between various corners and, and the complexity of closing timing at the top level is becoming very, very large. So it, it's no longer sufficient to kind of uh, divide the chip into many, many blocks and, you know, Basically, it hurts design productivity. So why don't you draw this out for us? Okay. So, so PV, what are we looking at here? So here we are looking at floor plan of a large SOC and how historically it has been done. Traditionally, it has been done. So traditionally, design planning tools are used upfront at the, in the beginning of the chip design. And using design planning tools, the chip is carved into multiple different blocks here. So here you can see, you know, variety of different blocks, you know, you know, block A, block B, like this has been drawn. And uh, upfront, you know, the tools like design planning uh, from Synopsys and other companies can generate budgets for different block. And pretty much design implementation for each of the block is carried out in isolation without kind of uh, conferring with the other block implementation. And that probably worked when you were at 28 nanometers and above, but we're down at seven moving to five, right? That is correct, that is correct. So that adds to the complexity of timing closure. So coupled with uh, you know advanced nodes, number of corners are increasing, number of voltage levels are increasing, number of operating modes are increasing. So this complicates the timing closure problem. So it's no longer sufficient to perform design implementation of each block and push the complexity of closing all the interface paths to the top level. So basically like, uh, you know, if you do design implementation, how we are doing today, the complexity of closing timing at the end becomes much more complex. And, and how the reason why it was partitioned like this was EDA tools inability to deal with big chips. So because the capacity and performance of EDA tools was limited by the, the size of the design they could handle. So as a result, this divide and conquer approach had to be adopted to deal with limitations of EDA tools. And you're also dealing with more dependencies because you have, what, uh, different power uh, zones, power rails? That is, correct. that is correct. That adds to the complexity and hence dividing the chip into multiple blocks like this, you know, further hurts the productivity as well as timing closure. So what has that been doing? What, what's been the impact of that? Okay, so basically the impact of the adopting traditional methodology to design large chips has been increased schedule, you know, overall turnaround time of the product has, or tool has gone up. As a result, the schedules have slipped, you know, pushing all the timing closure problem toward the back end, hurting, you know, the tape out schedule and things like that. So, so basically, you know, the traditional methodology of dividing chips into multiple small blocks to do large chips has been hurting productivity of the timing closure, pushing the schedules. Has it been impacting manufacturability of these chips as well? I mean, typically, before you go to manufacturing, we make sure that, you know, chips are signed off clean. So it's has less problem to with manufacturing because all the checks are done before that. But basically, it's just the schedule of closing timing and other, you know, electrical, you know, analysis before we go to manufacturing. That itself has been hurting. Does it give you more confidence as you go into the design process as well throughout the flow that this will work? Yes. So, so basically, like, uh, so... Distributed processing is just one angle to the solution. Obviously, the tool has to understand all the other modeling information for the lower geometries, 
you know, advances in timing analysis, such as, you know, waveform propagation, variation, and all those information needs to be modeled up front. So, so that's an orthogonal angle to what we're talking today, which is more on the technology to improve design productivity by being able to handle large chips flat. So, so modeling technology, modeling technology like uh, variation modeling and waveform propagation, all those things, all the electrical analysis enhancement has to be done either way. But uh, what we're describing today is related to how to improve designers' productivity by being able to handle large chips flat. So here, instead of dividing chip into like 50 blocks here, let's say if we can do the same chip by doing five blocks. So instead of 50 blocks needing you know, 50 different design teams with individual budgets and timing constraints and all that, which also adds to the complexity. Imagine like uh, having many, many teams interacting to get the chip to the closure. Here you have only two teams or three teams kind of working together. So, so this technology primarily allows us to do design implementation flat for large blocks. Does time to market change at all, or is it pretty much confidence in the design as you go? No, it, 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 it significantly improves time to market. So with the traditional technique like this, where chips are divided into multiple blocks, a significant amount of time is wasted when you bring this back together to perform chip assembly. So it, I would say anywhere between you know, 40 to 50% of TAT you know, is spent in you know, chip assembly, where you bring all the blocks together, you enable multiple other operating corners, and you see all the problem when things come back together. When individual blocks are being implemented, we don't know the interaction from the other blocks. We rely on budgets that were generated multiple steps before that hurts the convergence. So this technology, by eliminating the need to divide into so many blocks, it avoids all the other you know, misinformation. And basically, with the, with, the, with the tool being able to directly handle chip design flat, we can get a superior design much faster. So it helps in achieving both TAT as well as improving the, the PPA, the, the QR also. There's another piece to this too, right? Because mm -hmm. anything, anything about some of the old designs uh, mm -hmm. going back to 28 nanometers and before that, mm -hmm. those are pretty much one processor on a board. That's now true. now what you're dealing with is completely heterogeneous types of architectures, brand new that we've never even dealt with before. That's true. That's true. So, so you're right, so modern servers, as you said correctly, so they come up with multi-core processors. So most of the tools, I mean, including Synopsys tools, have already been architected to take advantage of multi-core processors. So, so this is what we call a shared memory multiprocessing. So you have multi-core processors on one machine and you have common shared memory and we take advantage of multi-threading technology to take advantage of all the multiple cores on the same machine. But what has, what has happened is the scaling itself, it has tapered after a certain number of processors. And one more thing I want to point out here is like a scaling technology, whether it's a shared memory multiprocessing or distributed memory multiprocessing, which I'll describe in a minute, uh, they work very well for the problems that are static in nature, like verification problems where design is not changing. Distributed design implementation is inherently very hard problem because here design data is dynamic. So we, we have the challenge of you know, uh, dealing with data that is changing in nature. We are optimizing paths, we are changing gates, we are changing wires, and we have to optimize this while working on many different blocks. So what happens when you start distributing the processing here? Right, so basically the, the complexity here is how to take advantage of multiple cores on multiple machines and still able to come out much ahead and not lose QR. So, so overall objective still remains how to come ahead faster and not lose QR. So, so basically, I mean, the goal is to get to the result faster and, and similar or better performance. How do you do that? Because one of the problems of splitting things up and parallelizing it is that's that true. you have to put things back together. That's exactly, that's a very good point. Eh? So, so basically that's where we have done some innovation at the infrastructure level and how do you do design partitioning and communicate dynamically design implementation changes as they happen. So one of the big challenges with distributed design implementation is, I mean, you could distribute the problem, but if they don't communicate information, they remain static, they, they work with stale data, and net result is like uh, 
you don't meet QR when you put things back together. So what we have invested in is a very um, innovative distributed infrastructure or distributed architecture uh, where, you know, here I've drawn this picture where you have a master slave architecture. So work is divided among different workers where each worker is like separate machines and each worker has multiple cores available also. So, so distributed design implementation and multi-core, they are additive technologies. So, so here, when the design is distributed, we have infrastructure where the data is communicated dynamically as they are happening. So whatever changes is done by this processing at worker one, the data is communicated in real time as they happen. So as a result, master is continuously aware of what's happening. So it's like a master coordinator. So in fact, this technology is called coordinated and distributed design implementation. So it's distributed, it's asynchronous, but it is coordinated by master. Any different skill set needed in order to work with this kind of technology? No, for a user, nothing much is needed because all this technology is abstracted within the tool itself. So a designer needs to just specify like how many machines they, they are able to run it on. And this technology is very well suitable for you know, scaling on the cloud also where you know, getting machines are much easier. So, so yes, users don't need to do any extra work to kind of uh, get advantage of this technology. So the idea is basically you're doing in design what, what some of these chips are doing out in the real world, right? That's so you're true. trying to pull a lot of these things together and move it, move it through a lot faster by parallelizing and partitioning the data. That's true. That's true. That's true. That's exactly what we are doing. So basically the, the, the goal of and main essence of this technology is how to get design convergence, how to do big design flat faster and in the process achieve superior PPA or QR. Because currently, a lot of customers have told us that when you partition the design into multiple blocks, they lose QR because QR gets trapped in all this partitioning. They need to do more work to keep up with that and they lose QR. So by being able to design big chip flat, not only you can come out ahead on schedule, but you can also get superior power and timing also. So, so that's, that's the main advantage of this approach. P.V. Srinivas, thanks for a great explanation. So thank you. Thank you, Ed.